In part 1 we had learned about the basic principle of NMR spectroscopy and in part 2 mainly we are going to talk about the origin of the signal in NMR spectroscopy and the basic components of a spectrophotometer. Myself Mamta Sethi to read about these topics in details, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing, the link to which is given in the description box. So in the previous section, we have understood the fact that the two degenerate states which were there in the absence of external magnetic field are now split into two energy levels. Now once you have these two different energy levels there is an energy gap and as we know that in every branch of spectroscopy this is I mean there is going to be the interaction with the electromagnetic radiation. So up to now we have not uh, discussed the role of electromagnetic radiation. This was only with the involvement of external magnetic field. Now comes the role of the electromagnetic radiation. Now electromagnetic radiation will be coming from the region which uh, the energy of which will be exactly matching with this energy gap. So we all know that this is the formula you know this is the quantitative expression for the energy gap. So we all know we have seen it in the earlier uh, presentations also that in order to undergo absorption this energy gap should be equal to the frequency of the electromagnetic energy of the electromagnetic radiation that is delta E equal to H nu where H is Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. Now this is coming from the electromagnetic radiation and this expression is due to the intrinsic property of the nuclei. This gap delta E is numerically equal to Gn mu n b naught where Gn stands for nuclear G factor. Mu n stands for the magnetic moment of the uh, magnetic nuclei. B naught stands for the strength of external magnetic field. Now when this condition which is also known as Bohr's frequency condition once this energy of the electromagnetic radiation matches with this energy gap the absorption of energy will take place. Now this gap is equal to the frequency of the radiation which comes from radio frequency region. We all can understand here the fact that NMR spectra of any molecule is observed in radio frequency region. As we know that different type of spectra are originated uh, with the help of the radiation coming from different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So here the energy is coming from radio frequency region. Now so once the energy from the radio frequency region is absorbed the nuclei which is having alpha spin will undergo spin flipping right spin flipping that is it is going to you know go into the higher energy state which will be in the beta spin state. Now uh, and this absorption is recorded by the instrument as a signal. This absorption is recorded and we get the signal corresponding to any nucleus which is NMR active. So here we have seen that how a signal is uh, observed in NMR spectra. Now let's see that you know based on this expression which we have seen that is your Bohr's frequency condition. We will now understand that how many in how many ways we can actually record the NMR spectrum of a nucleus. So we see here that this gap this energy gap is directly proportional to what the strength of the magnetic field and it is also related to the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. 
so obviously you know it is since it is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field uh, then we can keep b as constant and vary the frequency so this is one way of recording the spectrum but there is another way that we can keep the frequency fixed and we can vary the strength of the magnetic field this uh, you know way of recording the nmr spectrum is usually preferred therefore the instruments that uh, we use in nmr spectroscopy that is called as nmr spectrophotometer they usually work as a constant frequency so uh, let's understand you know uh, how a nmr spectrophotometer work as we have seen that uh, what we are going to do here is we are going to keep the frequency constant. So we can see here also that this spectrophotometer, NMR spectrophotometer works at a constant frequency, which in this case, this is the instrument which works at frequency 60 megahertz. So we are keeping the frequency constant and we are going to vary the strength of the magnetic field. Now let us first understand that what are the basic components of a spectrophotometer. So we need to have what? So this is you know a permanent uh, you need permanent magnets. So of course these magnets are uh, placed here in order to generate the external magnetic field. Right. So uh, the sample is kept here. This is a you know uh, the position where the sample is kept inside a cuvid, and the sample is placed under the effect of these external magnets. So why are these magnets important? Because only the presence of these magnets will align the magnetic nuclei in a preferred direction. Otherwise, they are randomly oriented oriented so after you know they are aligned either along the field or against the field then comes the role of this radio frequency that means in in every spectrophotometer we have a source of radiation source of electromagnetic radiation and which in this case is radio frequency oscillator so a source which can provide energy coming from the radio frequency region. Now once the energy from the radio frequency region is absorbed this sample is in the excited state undergoes absorption or it is called as spin flipping. After it has undergone the spin flipping the source is switched off and then nuclei are allowed to uh, come down to the ground state and this uh, is recorded as a signal with the help of this radio frequency detector and a display unit is also connected to this detector which can display the signal uh, coming from the magnetic nuclei. So this basically uh, you know gives a comprehensive description about the spectrophotometer. So in this presentation we had learned about you know what NMR spectroscopy is. We have also understood the basic principle of NMR spectroscopy and we have learned about the fact that which nucleus will show NMR spectrum and how. And then we also learned about you know in how many ways we can record the NMR spectrum and the basic components of an NMR spectrophotometer. To read about these topics in details, you can refer to the book by S. Chan Publishing, the link to which is given in the description box. If you like my video, please like, subscribe and share. Press the bell icon for future notification. Thank you. permission of the copyright holder.